Hello everyone and welcome back to Adrian and Gash, which is a channel dedicated to Age of Sigma and in this video we are going to be doing something a little bit different and this is going to be my top 10 models that have came out for Warhammer Age of Sigma 2nd edition. So this is something that was suggested to me from you guys. I think I was doing a hobby hangout or something and then you guys have said in the chat that you would like me to do a video covering my top 10 favorite models that came out for Warhammer Age of Sigma 2nd edition. So I thought, you know, before the lights and the candles are blown out for 2nd edition, let's get this video out here before the 3rd edition comes around the corner. So what I'd like to say to you guys is, Firstly, let me know in the comments of this video what your favourite top 10 models were that came out through Age of Sigma 2nd Edition. So bear in mind that, remember, not the ones from 1st Edition or the new ones we're getting from 3rd Edition, just 2nd Edition Age of Sigma, which is seen as when I went through and I had to pick my top 10, there's been a bucket load of models come out. So honestly, you have loads to choose from. So let me know down below. And then the second thing I want to say as well is this is my personal favourite list of models that have came out so if you guys disagree that's absolutely fine i'm not saying that these are the 10 most superior models that came out and if you think anything different you're wrong actually i'm quite the opposite when i say that and then the other thing i want to say as well just to add on is that this is not going to be perfectly in order in number 10 is the worst out of my top 10 and number 1 is the best because to be honest with you it's actually quite hard to judge them going through my even in my own personal preference of what I thought was the best number 1 model that came out in Warhammer Age of Sigma 2nd edition. And then just the other thing I want to say is obviously if you enjoyed the video smash the like button, smash the subscribe button if you haven't already. But also, particularly for this video, this is something very different to what I normally do as when I talk about models, I'll either talk about the law or I talk about what I think of their rules. Whereas this video, like I said, it's going to be a quick video, probably about 15 minutes, and it's purely just based on what I think of the models. So if you actually like me reviewing model ranges, not in terms of their rules and their law, but just the models themselves, let me know that in the comments as well. Was it something I can return to? Because I haven't really done anything like this before so let me know that but with all this aside guys let us go straight into my first model on the list right and we're going to start at number 10 which of course is going to be the mighty bat route which could have been number one but there's so many other cool models to get through on this list at least it makes it on there so the mighty bat rat is of course the most scariest of creatures that haunts the streets of orphan calm within the game Warhammer Quest Cursed City. It stands anywhere between 20 to 40 feet tall, depending if it's standing on its rear hind legs. Wait, what's this? A message from GW? Because I mentioned Warhammer Quest Cursed City, standard issue protocol has been announced. Exterminatus will commence shortly. I have been warned. I knew the consequences of my actions, and there will be no mercy. What does that mean? Tactical nuke incoming! <laughs> So sorry for that rude interruption and it seems like we've now lost a visual feed as well so I just have to talk to you guys over the microphone but the first one we've got up now is going to be a Mega Gargan and it is the Kraken Eater. Why a Mega Gargan? Just the sheer bloody size of these things makes them deserve a place on this list and the reason why I've gone for the Kraken Eater is purely because I think it's got the best character. I love the net it has all the uh, creatures poking out of it. I love the massive jaw it's got around its neck. This thing is absolutely amazing, bar the price tag. Right, and then the next one we've got up is the Evocators on Celestial Dragon Lines. You may be thinking, what the hell? I meant to hate Stormcast. I know, and this readers really kind of make it look like and really try and just push things into this video so the whole list is not purely Slaves of Darkness and Death. FYI, most of the models in this video are going to be from the Death Grand Alliance. But anyway, with the Draco lines, I think they're really quite cool. It's the, I'd say, the coolest unit I've seen come out for the Stormcast Eternals in my honest preference, I would say. I'm not a massive fan of the Evocators. So I think they're okay. They're fine, but it's mainly the Draco lines you get from this, obviously, this set, which I think are great. You know, the Battle Cats, I think they're absolutely awesome. Can definitely see myself converting them into Slaves to Darkness, but this is where I'm going to say a little, a little bit of a, a drop for me, and I think a bit for me to be disappointed 
within myself is that because I've collected so many unwanted Stormcast Eternals in the Mortal Realm magazines that I am going to start a Stormcast Eternal army at some point soon. I know, please don't be mean to me in the comments about this, but the reason behind it is because I just simply have too many Stormcasts to convert into Slaves of Darkness. Like I was planning loads of conversions and I can still do loads of conversions, but I still have loads of Stormcast Eternals left over from it. And uh, too many to be uh, decapitated corpses and stuff on the bases. I've already done that. So I will be turning this into an army and I will also have the Stormcasts from the Dominion box set to be a part of that as well. So I'm quite excited. I'm looking forward to painting these guys. I think they'd be great. And I got three of these models in my Mortal Realm magazines. And then next up, we have the mighty Rock Gut Trogoffs. And honestly, if any of you people don't think they deserve a place on this list, I'll happily fight you for it. Because these models are simply stunning. The fact that I don't actually own them, I don't have like a Destruction Army really, or I don't have play Gloom, so I get, so I don't have them, but they are absolutely amazing. I've always loved trolls since a child, and especially Warhammer trolls. Could never afford them as a kid. So that's why I have a massive attachment to these guys. But I know people who have built them. I've seen the kit, and they're just really, really good. They go together so well. There's loads of variations of how you can build these guys so they don't look like they're like loads of mono poses everywhere. And just the little details, like the one holding the big a uh, pillar above his head of the dwarven statue with the uh, crystal in it. There's a little worm hanging from it and then there's like a little bird's nest on his head and a little bird trying to eat the worm and then one of them's got like a rock strap to their head <laughs> with just a bit of like leather twine. <laughs> like the character in these guys is simply just beautiful and I'd love to get a box of these guys at some point. And then next up, as much as I don't like playing against this particular guy, he deserves a place on this list. Number one, because there's two reasons here, is out of um, pure nostalgia, as my first ever models I collected as a kid were Lizardmen, and I owe it to them being safe for now, but also because this Lord Craig model is absolutely stunning. Um, the revamp of it is so much cooler than the old one. The old one's, like I said, nice, but I think they've done such a great job and done Absolutely huge justice to him in terms of his new model and he'll look a lot more fearsome on the battlefield with his new size. Right, and then this next one, I keep it quick because I know this is going to be the most controversial one on the list because this is Lauka, the mother of nightmares, I think it's pronounced. I really, really like this model. I know a bunch of you guys absolutely hate it and that kind of makes me like it more. And this model, why I really like it is because it just feels something fresh, something new we haven't seen before, if you've never seen Magic the Gathering. But the other thing why I like this model is just because it looks absolutely creepy. And for anyone who thinks that this just looks like a monster with its heads up a vampire, once you see it in 3D and everything else, it doesn't look like that. And at the end of the day, that's how centaur creatures kind of work. You know, where the head is meant to be is where the top half of the creature is. Anyway, enough about that. I love it. You can let me know if you don't like it somewhere else. I don't care. And then for number four, we go all the way back to the start of second edition for Warhammer Age Sigma with Reichnor the Grim Hailer. Honestly, this is probably my favorite model out of all the Nighthawk range. And the Nighthawk range, as much as I like it, I could have done a whole video on my top 10 like favorite models on Warhammer Age Sigma second edition by it just being the Nighthawk range because there's not a single model in the Nighthawk range I don't like, which I can't really say about every single faction. So that shows how much I like it. The reason why I also like uh, Right Nord Grim Hader himself specifically is because number one is actually really cheap to buy, which is cool. Got a more rare magazine, so really cheap there. But because who doesn't like an undead Pegasus rided by a Grim Reaper? Just that sort of aesthetic is amazing. And the candles on the creature's head, fantastic. Right, and then the next one are going to be Slick Blade Seekers from the Heed Knights of Slanesh. Now, there was no way I was going to do my top 10 favourite models from 2nd edition without including these guys. They are by far my favourite models from the whole of the Heed Knights of Slanesh range. I know you can get like Bliss Barb Archers on them and stuff, and they're practically the same, but these guys got uh, many weapons. But these just look absolutely fantastic from someone who also 
owns a surprising amount of the old Seeker models, considering I don't really like the old Seeker models. These Seekers, they've done such a good job in updating them. I don't think I've seen it yet, but when I first saw them, I said someone could do such a good job by converting them into something for Seraphon, because they almost look like Velociraptor-like, you know, from Jurassic World, you know, the lower half of their bodies. They look really fearsome and intimidating. I wish they were a bit more scarier in the game. But I also love the riders for them. Unlike when I talked about the Dracolines, I said basically it's all 90% Dracolines why I really like those models. When it comes to these models, the riders have a fantastic Greek slash Persian sort of theme to them, which brilliantly just slips into my Greek theme for my Slaanesh Slays the Darkness army. So I love them, we'll buy them at some point in the future. And then the next one might seem simple, but it is going to be the fell bats. And I know you might be thinking, what? why have I put these bats on this list? That's because I am a huge, massive fan when it comes to all things vampires, and especially like gigantic vampire bats. Absolutely really like them. I mean, I even like the old models, not like, you know, three for 30 pounds that I like them, but I really, really did like them. Again, nostalgia. But these new models absolutely blow those old ones out of the water. They look incredible. Yes, they're expensive for what they do in the game, you know, money and in terms of points, but they look phenomenal. I really like the one where it's on the pillar, so it's not flapping around, but it's on the pillar. It looks really cool, sort of like peeking around, but also just the size of these guys are huge. They did a great job of them. I'm so glad they brought them back. And then for the next one on the list, I thought I'd chuck some love out to Corn because I really like the Corn model range. I just don't have a Corn army. I have a bloody Corn uh, dragon that cost me an arm and a leg, and I can't actually use it in a 2000 point game now, and it's useless for its points, but you know, thank you, Games Workshop. Maybe Maybe I'll have a game of it one day in the future, maybe. But Skull Taker, going to him, I think he's absolutely fantastic and incredible hero. And I think what really goes to show why I put him on the list is you don't have to be, you know, a massive monster just to be a really cool model. I mean, just his cape now, which you can see on the screen, just shows absolutely how much character he's got into his dueling. The fact that he's like melting a skull, I believe it is, in his hand. Just like, he's really, really cool and just looks so much different and better just than like a normal blood letter, which I think he could easily end up looking like, like how his old model really doesn't stand up to the new one. The new model looks absolutely lovely and I may get it one day because it just looks so good. And now you may be thinking, oh, that's all of them that's done. Nope, we've got a bonus five. I can keep to the top 10. It's too bloody hard. I'd even want to make a list of about 50 models I enjoyed that came out for Warhammer Age of Sigma 2nd Edition. But we'll cap it out. This is going to go up to 15. I know I cheated, but I just couldn't do it. So hopefully you guys tell me your top 10 down below. But if there's a few extra ones you want to add on, just put them down below and that'll be absolutely fine. It'd be good to hear and to see what you guys are liking. But going on to the first one of the bonus ones is going to be cat across the Mortark of the Necropolis. So this is a fantastic model. It really just felt like something new again for Warhammer Age of Sigma because the whole model was a diorama. It wasn't just cat across being, you know, a huge Mortark or something like that. It was the whole characterful base he's got where he's got his lieutenants on there. It's just so much built up to this. It makes it look like a custom model rather than just a standard model in the game. And that's what I really like about him. And I don't own him for my Aussie Arc Bone Reapers yet, but I will do one day, like I'm saying, for most of the models in this list. Right, but anyway, on to the second one on the bonus five. And this, again, I cheated, sorry, because this is not just one model. This is a whole box set, right? Because otherwise it would have been three editions and it would have been a bonus eight. And, you know, a bonus... Who's even heard of that? So... These three are going to be purely from the Slaves the Darkness Star Collecting Box, which I still call the new Star Collecting Box, even though it came out over a year and a half ago, and they haven't even sold the models separate yet. Yes, Nighthorn players, if you are listening, I am hearing you about the Knight of Shrouds and the Field Steeds and the other heroes you get from that box set of Soul Wars. I feel for you. But these guys you can't buy separately yet. On the plus size, though, is that... This box set is fantastic value. If you do want to buy it for your Slaves to Darkness Army, it's just really painful to paint. But anyway, going on to the models themselves. So the Chaos Warriors, they are incredible. And they're, I really, I can just roll it into one. So the Chaos Warriors and the Chaos Knights, they've done such a good job of updating an existing models, 
but still with the ability to be able to make the new models seamlessly fit into the old models of your collection. Now I say seamlessly, it's not strictly true, like the new ones will stand out and they will look better, but the aesthetic looks the same, so you can mix them. They've done such a good job with that factor that, you know, I take my hat off to GW, you know, I slag them off whenever I don't like them, but I also do take my hat off for when I think they've done a good job. And on the Chaos Knights and the Chaos Warriors, I think they've done an absolutely fantastic job. So much character in those alone. And then also when we come across the Chaos Lord on Karkadrak, this is the newest edition of a Chaos Lord. And I think they've done a really, really nice job where you had like the Chaos Lord on foot, which I know it's useful for command abilities, but if we look at aesthetic wise, you've got your Chaos Lord on foot, Chaos Lord on demonic mount, so you know, a big scary horse. Um, but then you have the Manticore, you didn't really have anything between, you know, the demonic mount and then the monster. So I think the Karkadrak does a great job and really it's closer to the Manticore um, in, you know, in its points and really on its output, like a, a Chaos Lord and Karkadrak can do a hell of a lot of damage to the enemy in the game and even more than a manticore at some point so yeah this was a model that when i first saw i built and painted it absolutely loved it but i thought i really like the model but i don't think its rules are very good and i was happy to be proven wrong when it butchered the enemy so i definitely love this entire box set can't recommend it well enough and it's my favorite box set to come out for second edition where mage sigma without a doubt okay and then on to the next one we'll make it quick because this is Bedakor, and I know you guys would refer to him as Bedakor the Bastard. Absolutely fantastic model. When I saw this model come out, it was one of the first models I've seen for a long time where I was just like, this looks incredible. I'm blown away by it. So, you know, amazing job, GW. On that note, I just feel sorry for my small Bedakor now that I just have to use as a demon prince that I painted literally a month before or something like that before this model came out. And then on to the fourth one of the bonus five. How could we not do a list without the glorious looking vampire blood knights for the soul blight grave lords? These models are absolutely amazing. I think almost half the planet was waiting for new plastic blood knights and I'm so glad we got them. And I think they did the job so well apart from only Niggle. Given the Nightmare Steeds skull faces just doesn't really feel right when the rest of them have flesh on. But apart from that, they look fantastic and I can't wait to buy them at some point soon. And then the last one on my list, and I know I said I wasn't doing this list in like the number one spot or the bonus fifth one spot is the best one. However, the Dire Walls may be my favourite unit to come out in second edition because there's not a fault wrong with these guys at all. And this is coming from someone who loves... The old ones for nostalgia purposes, but I'll completely admit these ones are much, much better. And th there's just nothing wrong with them. They look absolutely stunning. Like, honestly, this is my favourite model. Maybe the Blood Knights and Bellacore on par, but honestly, I think the Dire Wolves have it. I mean, even you just got like that Dire Wolf with the arrow in him, which looks just great and so dynamic and he's pouncing. And then you have one that's more stationary with like a crow eating the flesh of its back. And they've done such a good job of making them obviously look so animated, but obviously, again, dead. Very much dead, but still have that wolf appeal. It looks absolutely incredible. And really, if I was to buy anything for the Soul Black Grave Lords, I would buy those straight away because they look incredible. But I've already got 30 old Direwolves, so I'll wait before I buy any new ones, I think. But honestly, beautiful models. And it's very rare that I can see a model and not pick a... Problem with it at all, and on that note, it would probably be the Direwolves and Bellacore, who are my two favourite models to come out for Warhammer Age of Sigma 2nd Edition. And with that, guys, I am going to end the video here. It might seem just a bit quick, this video, but that's why I wanted it to be, because honestly, you know what I'm like, guys. I could ramble on about each model for probably about 10 minutes or something on just pointing out things I like. So I wanted to keep this quick. I want it to be sort of like a nice, fun video. You know, we've come to the end of second edition now, a bit of like a last celebration of what second edition was. And... Um, or, you know, looking forward to third edition. But what I want to hear, like I said at the start, is let me know down below your top 10 models or do what I do, cheat and just, I said I did 15, but really, you know, 18 top models, even though this video will be the top 10 of my favorites. Um, let me know that down below. 
And also, of course, you know, like I said, let me know down below if you enjoy this sort of content, if you want me to review other model ranges, if you want me to review models for longer, not do it like a quick sort of fire video, let me know that down below. It's honestly, that sort of feedback is stuff that I really, really do appreciate and only helps the channel get better and make content that you guys want to see. So yes, let me know that down below as well. That'd be fantastic. And as always guys, if you did enjoy this video, make sure you smash that like button, you smash the subscribe button, and you smash the bell button. Because by liking this video, it shows to me, like I said, that you enjoy it. Also shows to YouTube that other people are enjoying this video, and hopefully they'll recommend it to people who don't know about the channel, to try and bring people to the channel. If you subscribe to this channel, literally one click, but at the end of the day, that's how this channel grows. And that would be absolutely amazing, as I know a lot of you guys have been doing that lately. I've seen the data, as everyone does in the world these days, and I'm really blown away by it. So literally, we only have one person who hasn't subscribed. So if you're that one person and the subscribe button is red, smash it, as that will make the channel grow and make the content better. And I'll love you forever, all that sort of stuff. But something that I really want to ask you guys to do is smash the bell button, as this is something that... As the subscriber count on the channel has gone up, which has been amazing, the bell button is basically my channel lacks like the YouTube average for how many people press the bell button, which makes me a bit sad. So if you could smash that, that'd be great. You know, ring it, ding, 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 ding. That would be amazing. And to be honest, it would make my day. And if you feel like you know anyone else who would enjoy this video, make sure you share it with them. If you'd like to join the unending conversation, I'm going to call it now, that we've got in the Agent of Gash Discord, there's a link to my Discord in the description of this video. If you're new to um, Discord, you're not really too sure what it is. Kind of like a WhatsApp group, but everyone just talks about what's important, basically Warhammer, and coming to terms of like painting, armies, list building, and news, and law. All that goodness is in the Age of Nagash Discord. We've got about 280 people in it now, so join it and you won't regret it. And what I'd like to say as well is a massive shout out, as always, to my patrons and YouTube members. So if you aren't aware, if you click the join button, it will allow you to become a member of Asian Agash, where you can give anything from just one pound a month, or you can click the link to my Patreon at the top of the description down below, take to my Patreon where you can give anything from just one dollar a month. Why am I asking you guys for money? Basically, it's because at the end of the day, this uh, channel makes no profit or anything like that, as a lot of YouTubers, the money you get back, if it was a business, you know, you'd be losing money every month. But what this means when you support the channel in this sense is it makes me be able to justify putting all this time, money and research and effort I put into this channel. It allows me to justify it. And if you can support in any way you can, even just one dollar or one pound a month, it allows me to keep this up. As if I didn't have anyone who did that, and I'm going to read through these fantastic people in a moment. I wouldn't be doing this YouTube channel and you guys would not be watching this video right now. So my biggest supporter out of everyone is going to be my Vampire Lord on Zombie Dragon. It was such a good model as well, but you know, it came out a long while ago. But this is going to be Philco. So thank you so much, Philco. As I always say at the end of every single video, the generosity you give to the channel is mind-blowing. And I really do not know what to say, but for, please keep it up. And you're generally really, really a kind person for doing so. And then to my Morgas, who is Bleed Red, who has been a Morgas for a long time now. So thank you so much for your huge support you give to the channel every month. It really does make a difference, mate. And then my Vampires, who are going to be my massive core that keeps the channel going, is going to be Amir, Stents, Rouse321, David A, Dragonitty, Ronnie H, Darren L, Spare Bear, Christopher H, Northdrop, Nathan F, Andrew G, Ben C, Wiggy Hootie, and Anthony R. Thank you all so much for your very generous support you give the channel as well. And then my Necromancers, who is Jack L, Radiation Riley, AW77, Dice Sargas, Wolf Nick, Michael W, Cranky Wombat, Madcap, Christopher C, Krista F, James S, Thomas B, Steve T, James T, Peshka F, JJ, R Christopher, Seption, and Nathan S. And I gave Nathan S a shout out when I did a live video when he became a necromancer here on uh, YouTube membership for Agent of Gash. And I just want to say a special thank you to you again, mate, for making that decision. You really won't regret it. It's going to massively help towards keeping the channel going. Thank you so much. So a huge shout out to all of these amazing people who make all this possible. If you enjoy any of my content, wouldn't be possible without these people. So, you know, say a thank you to them as well.
And like I said, if you want to support the channel, click the join button, allow you to become a member and agent of Gash, or click the link to my Patreon. Anything from like one pound, one dollar a month might seem small and there's no point doing it. Massively helps. So if you could, that'd be great. But if you can't, guys, absolutely no problem at all. But if you did enjoy the video, all I ask is you smash the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell notification if you haven't already. Because I know a lot of you guys already pressed the first two, but if you could smash and ring that bell like it's a screaming bell and you're a bloody gracier, that would be fantastic. And above everything else, guys, I'm really happy that you came and watched this video today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching. Remember until next time to stay safe, stay hygienic, wear a mask, and for God's sake, wash your hands, because when you play with any of these models listed in this video, if you've got clean hands, apart from for these Sinesh guys, you're a role better in your games. That's an Agash guarantee, whatever. But on to the more important thing is remember until next time that Nagash is all and all is one in Nagash.